and amen. Oh, God is so good. God is so good. You know, as I've, I've been praying about for the, this Sunday, you know, Lord, what, what, what is it that you want to minister to your people? See, because what you need to understand is that, you know, when we prepare to, to give a word, uh, at least here at this church and, and Lost and Found, you know, we, we don't have a, uh, a, uh, a calendar of sermons that we pull up and say, oh, it is May 28th. We're going to preach on this today. You know, we, we don't have, have that. Now, there are some churches that do like to schedule their sermons, you know, in advance, and they know what topics they're going to do. And those things are good. Nothing wrong with that in the sense of, you know, they want to cover as many, uh, uh, you know, uh, subjects of the Bible that they can, you know, because there are so many different subjects. There's only 52 weeks in a year, 52 Sundays. And so, you know, you got to kind of say, hey, what are we going to talk about, you know, for the next 52 weeks? Some churches plan out their their messages some some like to do uh you know uh, spend a few weeks on certain topics you know we do that from time to time but the way we get ready for a sunday message is we don't have a calendar of you know predetermined subjects or topics you know we we do it uh, the the holy spirit way can you say amen and what that means is this is that we go it to god and we pray about it and we meditate and and we seek the spirit of god and we say lord what is it that you want to speak to your people about and that's what we do we press into god right now some may say well how do you how do you hear from from the lord Right? How do you hear from the Lord? Well, He speaks to us. He speaks to our spirit. And He will speak to you if you take the time to uh, spend it with Him. He will speak to you as well. And that's why we encourage you so much to spend time in His, in his Word. This right here. This is His Word. This is Him revealing Himself to us. And as you spend time in the Word, He will speak to you through His Word. That's not the only way He can speak to you. He could speak to you in other ways, right? But, but this is a, you know, a, a good way that he speaks to you, but he will speak to you in other ways as well. But the point being is this, is that when we get ready for a message on Sunday, we want it to be direct from heaven. Amen? We want it to be direct from heaven. So, so that is why we, we have to press in and we have to say, okay, God, what is it that you want to speak about? And he gave us something this morning. Right, and we'll get to that in, in just a second. But I wanna I wanna build a foundation before we get to what it is we're gonna be uh, talking about. What I believe the Lord ha has for you this morning. So let's go to the Book of Acts, chapter twenty. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a foundation to get to where we need to be. So we're going to the Book of Acts, chapter twenty, and we're going here to verse number seven. So here in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, this is what the Word of God says. It says, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. What I want you to focus in on is this first part of the verse here in verse number 7. It was the first day of the week. The first day of the week. The disciples, what did they do? They, they came together. See, this is, this is what you are doing today. This is the first day of the week, and you have come together. Amen? This is what you're doing, right? You're coming together. It's the first day of the week. What you need to understand is that going back into the beginning of time, it hadn't always been like that. Now, you may have some family, you may have some friends, or maybe even you yourself may at a time have gone to church on a Saturday. Yeah, or maybe some of you have even uh, thought about that, or, or, you know, like, why do some people go to church on Saturday and some people go to church on Sunday, right? Well, you need to understand, you know, back in Old Testament times, right, uh, who does the Bible focus on? It focuses on the nation of Israel. They were Jews, right, and they practice Judaism, okay? And when they would get together, their, their day was, it was really technically Friday evening is when basically it started for them, right? And then it went into Saturday, 
right? And they call it the Sabbath, the day of rest, right? Because what did God tell us in the book of Genesis, right? He created the first for six days, right? And then on the seventh day, he what? He rested, the seventh day being Saturday, right? So how did we go from Saturday to Sunday, right? Well, how, did we, how did that happen? Well, from studying the scriptures, you'll find that when the first century Christians started assembling together, they, and I'm showing you here in the Word of God, it was done on the first day of the week. It went from Saturday to Sunday. Well, why would they change the day? Right? Why would they change the day? Well, remember when Jesus went to the cross, it was on a what? On a Friday, right? We just got done celebrating Easter, right? Resurrection Sunday, right? And Friday before Easter is called what? Good Friday, right? And that's symbolic because Jesus went to the cross on a Friday. And then it tells us, the Word of God tells us that he rose from the dead on a Sunday. Therefore, resurrection Sunday, right? And, and it was this transition of Jesus rising from the dead on the Sunday is what the first century Christians uh, took away and they started celebrating Sunday, the first day of the week. Now, you'll run into some hardcore people, and they'll say, oh, no, no, it don't change. The Sabbath is Saturday, right? And they'll get into some big theological discussions with them. And I would advise you, don't argue with them. Don't argue with them. Because why? Because somebody who has their, their how would you say, a, a belief about something, you're not going to change their mind, right? So you're going to be going in circles, you know? And, 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 you know, you could have good intentions with speaking to somebody, and it could kind of get ugly. So I would say... Be careful. Be careful with them when you talk about it because, you know, the thing is some people, are, are, they have it just, their mind's made up. No, you go to church on Saturday, not on Sunday, right? But is church just one day a week? And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning, right? Now, we assemble together, right, regularly at least once a week, hopefully, right? And I'm going to show you what the disciples actually did. Here in verse number 7 of Acts 20, it says it was the first day of the week. The disciples came together, and look at what they did. They broke bread. They ate meals together, right? They ate meals together. They broke bread. We're going to be breaking bread this afternoon after service. Hopefully you can stay and fellowship with us because this is the last uh, uh, Sunday of the month, and we like to... Uh, fellowship we like to break bread we like to hang out and you know rub elbows and get to know each other and we'll share a meal and and then we take it even a little bit further we like to celebrate all the birthdays of the particular month so if you're a may baby right we'll be celebrating you today amen you know and so this is what we'll be doing but see they they came together on a regular basis right they assembled together they broke bread See, so it was the first century Christians that, that started this practice. And they, they, it shows us in here in the Word that there was a transition from Saturday to Sunday as the day of worship, right? But once again, worship of the Lord is not something that only has to happen uh, on a certain day of the week, amen? It's something that can be done daily. There's a key word right there. That's a key word. I'm letting you guys in on something. Daily. Can, can everyone say that? Daily. Amen? Oh, God is good. Amen? So first century Christians gathered together, right, on the first day of the week. They, they assembled together. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, right? We're going somewhere. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and we're going to go here to uh, verse number 2. Oh, and here we go again. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, it says, On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. It's talking about when they're getting ready to assemble together the first day of the week. Actually, if you've read the rest of this chapter, it goes on to, to talk about 
you know, giving. We won't talk about that today, but this is what it's t- it goes on to actually talk about giving. But I wanted to point out something here about the first day of the week. Amen? Something about the first day of the week. So now we see that transition. See, but what you need to understand is that what, what God really wants for us is He does want us to get together on a regular basis because when we get together on a regular basis, it benefits you and it benefits the next person. Because see, Hebrews 10.25 tells us not to forsake the assembly of the brethren. In other words, not to take it lightly. Forsake, that word forsake, means to abandon or forget. So the word tells us don't don't abandon or forget gathering together, right? I've shared this scripture with you many times. Hopefully it's a scripture that uh, you have, uh, you know, memorized by now. And if not, that's okay. But I want to give you, uh, you know, the rest of that scripture. You don't have to turn there, but I'll... I'll read it to you. And this is out of Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25. Saying, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. What, it, what does that mean, exhort one another? It actually means to encourage. See, you come to church to encourage each other. Amen? And why? Because it says, and so much the more... As you see the day approaching. Well, what day is, is, is approaching? Fourth of July? Memorial Day? Oh, those days are coming. But the day that they're talking about is the day that the Lord Jesus himself returns for you and I. That's the day that this is talking about. So we come together to encourage one another as we are waiting for the Lord to come back. And he will come back for us. Amen? Right? So this is why we assemble together with one another, is to encourage one another. We encourage one another when we do that. Now, now that we have that foundation set, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 5. And let's key in on what we're really going to be getting into, but we wanted to have that foundation laid. Here in the the book of Acts, we're going to chapter 5. And we're going to be here in verse number 42. Acts 5, 42. See, I have this fan on and it feels so good, but it's blowing the pages. But thankfully for this rock that Jenna gave us, it's a uh, paperweight. Okay, Acts 5, we're going to verse number 42. Look at what the word says. And daily in the temple... Right And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Oh, you mean we can have church daily? Yes, we can. Amen? You know, actually, you are the church. Anywhere that you go and you get together with someone else and you start talking about the Lord Jesus, that's church happening right there. See, church is not defined by these walls. It's not defined by a building. Amen? See, so this is something that we do on a daily basis. Or this is something that at least we should do on a daily basis. And I want you to, to, to you know, get that this morning because, see, When you understand the significance of spending time daily with the Lord, that is going to benefit you. That is going to benefit you. When you're doing it daily, that's when you get to the place where you're not falling back into those old ways and old things. You get where I'm going with that? See, when you're doing something on a daily basis you're going to start to see the benefit of it. Amen? Amen. Isn't it amazing? There are so many things in our life that we do daily, automatically. We're on cruise control, right? Right? What's the first thing that you guys do when you get up? I'm sure many of you probably go potty when you get up first thing in the morning, right? You brush your teeth, right? Right? You wash your face, you jump in the shower, Right? These are things that, that we just do daily. Why? Because it's necessary. 
right? That we do these things. But see, those things that we do daily for our hygiene are important. Yes. But there's something that is most important uh, of everything that you do. And that is the time that you take to work on your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? See, that is something that you need to do daily. And when you start to do it daily, you will start to see the benefit of it. Amen? Now, for those of you who are just saying, you're like, man, Pastor, I'm just trying to make it here on Sunday. Let, we'll get to that daily thing at some point, but let me just get this Sunday thing down, right? That's okay. you got to start somewhere, amen? you got to start somewhere. But what I want to encourage you is to see that there are benefits to doing it daily, right? And just because... You can't make it to church daily, or, or maybe we're not having a service daily. You can still have time with the Lord. Amen? Now, there are churches that will teach their people the only way that you can get close to God is by being at the church house. There's people that, there, there's churches out there, they teach people that, that the only way to get close to God is, is through the church. And this is wrong because the, the Word of God teaches us that you can go directly to God. Amen? Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because you, you don't need to go to the church to get to God, there is a benefit to being part of a church family. Amen? Amen. So many times I, I run into people that are going through things in their life, right? You know, and they don't have a church family. You know, so many times I run into people that, you know, a loved one has passed away and they're, they're looking for somebody to perform their funeral services because they're not part of a church family. They don't, they don't have a pastor. They don't have, a, you know, a church to do this, so they're looking for somebody to do it for them. You know, but what's interesting is, is that when you're part of a church family, you need to understand is that not only uh, uh, are you being an encouragement to somebody else, but what happens is, is that you benefit as well. Amen? Because it's your church family that's going to be there for you. Now, I know somebody's thinking, saying, well, I don't know where my church family was when I went through something. Well, let me say this. Your church family can't help you if you don't let them. If you don't share with us, like, you know what? And you don't got to tell us every deep, dark secret. We don't got to know all the details. All you got to say is, you know what? Brother, sister, pray for me. I need some prayer, right? Pray for me. I'm going through something. That's all you got to say. And, and you know what? Don't be ashamed to tell somebody that you need some prayer because the bottom line is this, is that that's called pride right there. Because, see, pride isn't going to benefit you. It's going to hurt you. Right, So learn to, to swallow that up and just say, you know what, I need all the prayer I can get. When somebody comes and tells me, hey, pastor, I've been praying for you, I'll say, keep the prayers coming. I need all the prayer I can get. Sure, I spend time with the Lord daily, but guess what? I can use all the prayer that I can get. Because see, each of you has the ability to connect with God, and each of you has an anointing from God. And when you put that to use, there's power in that. And I'd, li I'd like to have some of that from you. Amen? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm more than okay with you praying for me. So don't think that, that uh, oh, Pastor, I, I, he, he don't need my prayers. Oh, I need all the prayers I can get. Please pray for me. I pray for you. Right? We need to pray for one another. Amen? So understand that. Just because you don't need to get to the church house to have a relationship with God, it's good to be part of a church family. Don't be a lone ranger. How many people out there, I've run into them all the time, they don't need, I don't even want to be part of a church. And, I, and, and you know what? I get it. There are a lot of people that have been done wrong by the church. I, I completely get it. But see, just because... You've been done wrong by a church doesn't mean that every church is like that. Amen? You, you, you got you know, to say, you know what? That doesn't mean that everyone's like that. 
See, so you have to, you know, be willing to say, you know what, you know, that was them or that was that church. I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, be open and, and be willing to, you know, give church a, a, a chance. Amen? So the thing is this, is that it will benefit you to plug in and to be part of. Don't be a lone ranger because there's a lot of them out there. Oh, and I know Joel Steen, that guy, man, he, he makes you feel good after he gives his message, right? And you're like, oh, uh, nobody can, can, can encourage me like Joel Osteen. And you're, and you're right, Joel Osteen has a special gift. But guess what? Can you get together with Joel Osteen when you're going through something? He's not there for you. Amen? You, you need to be connected. Amen? And see, being part of a church does that for you. But getting back to the point that we're originally making here in Acts 5.42, look at what the Word of God says. And they continued. Well, let me see here. My pa- we're going to get to that. That was chapter 2. Acts 5.42. Okay. And daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. They did it daily. And that's what I want you to take away this morning. You need to have a daily time with the Lord. Amen? Each of us needs to have a daily time with the Lord. It's going to benefit you. You're going to benefit from spending time with the Lord daily. Let me show you a man who benefited from spending time with the Lord daily. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 6. We're going to go here to the Old Testament. And uh, it should be right after Ezekiel. And we're going to Daniel, chapter 6. And we're going to go here to, um, let's see here. Daniel, yeah, let's go to chapter uh, 6. We're going to go to verse 10. Before we read this, I I want you to understand something about what's going on here in this particular portion of the Bible. You have a man named Daniel who loved the Lord, but it just so happened that his people was overtaken by another uh, uh, people group. Right? So that's what happened in them times. Right? Other, other groups would go to battle with one another and the winner would take the, you know, the ones that weren't killed. You know, they would take them and make them their servants, basically. And this is kind of what happened here. But the thing is here, you got Daniel. He's um, been told that uh, they don't want him praying to God no more because... You know, there's a plot going on against Daniel. I'm not going to get into all of that because we can. That's a whole other message. But let's just say this: is that Daniel was instructed, "Hey, Daniel, you know, uh, can't be praying to God no more because we got a king right here, and he's now your God. You got the king; he's your God now." So Daniel had a choice to make, and we're going to see what he did after being told, "Don't be praying to God no more." The king is, is God, right? And he had a choice to make, and this is what he did here in verse 10. It said, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, see, they made a law about this, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day. Three times. And he prayed and he gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. See, what he just did right there was violating a law and decree that would mean a death sentence. So, why did he open the windows? Why did he go in the closet? Why did he... Hide under the bed and pray. Because, see, this is something that he did on a 
regular basis. It was his custom since early days. This is something he did regularly since he was a young man. Pray to God. But see, he didn't just pray to God once a day or twice a day, three times a day. Three times a day. With the windows open, right, towards Jerusalem. Isn't that what, what it says? His windows open toward Jerusalem. That's his, that's his you know, uh, uh, where, where he came from. Jerusalem, right? And he did it three times. And not only did he pray, he gave thanks before his God, as was his custom. What ended up happening right after this, because there was a plot against him, they had him thrown into an arena and they let out the lion or lions. You remember that story you learned when you were in Sunday school, Daniel and the lion's den, right? It's not a, 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 a make-believe story. It's a real deal thing. It happened. It happened. And what happened when they came to open up the, the you know, and go into where they let Daniel with the lions, right? They, you know, the next day they went to go check on Daniel to go collect his bones, right? Because what happens when you get put in with some hungry lions? You become lunch, right? And what's, what's going to be left? Bones. So the next day they went to go get his bones, but guess what? He was there sleeping with the lions. His God seen him through. His God seen him through. Right? But see, you need to understand that there are benefits to spending time with God on a daily basis. Amen? A daily basis. See, because when you're spending time with God on a daily basis, what happens is, is that you, you know, no matter what's going on, you're having faith in the Lord. You're not going to compromise. If you get put in a situation like Daniel did where they're saying, hey, if you pray anymore to your God, you know, you're going to be breaking the law and facing a death sentence. But see, when you're spending time daily with God, you don't care about those kinds of things. Nothing, none of those things phase you. They don't matter. Because you know that God is on the throne, He's on your side, and He's going to see you through no matter what actually happens. And see, and Daniel had been faced with this situation, and see, he had a choice to make. And he decided, I'm going to continue doing what I've always done. And he got down on his knees and he prayed to God, but he also thanked God. See, because Daniel, even though you know, things were going good for him, you've got to understand that he was not with his people. So he could have had a negative attitude about the situation. How many of us, when we fall into situations, right, uh, do we have a positive attitude about it? Hopefully, you know, we do. But if you don't, that's okay because there's work to be done. Because, see, there's always something to thank God about, even in a what you may see is a bad situation. But what you may not know is that God may be opening some kind of door for you. God may have some bigger blessing for you. Amen. But see, you don't know that. See, and that is why you just have to learn to completely trust God no matter the situation. See, too many times we walk around and we base our decisions on what's going on on, on, the, on, the, on the surface. But see, as people of God, as people of faith, as believers, there is a whole nother system at work, right? There is a spiritual realm that you need to learn to start tapping into. And if you start tapping into that spiritual realm, you start tapping into the Spirit of God, you will start to see th those things from your spiritual eyes, amen? And you'll start to understand that you don't walk by uh, uh, a sight, but like the Bible says, you walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? And the thing is this, you'll start to see that, you know, there are things happening and, and you'll be able to, you know, have a, a discernment about them. You'll be able to see those things because you're not looking with the natural eyes. Amen? Because you have your spiritual eyes. Now let's go up to verse number uh, 3. Is it 3? Yeah, we're in Daniel chapter 6. 
Let's go up to verse number 3. Look at, look at what, what verse number 3 shows us here, right? Daniel 6, verse 3. It says... It says right here in Daniel 6.3, it says, Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps. Yeah, I thought the same thing. What the heck is a satrap? <laughs> All the satrap is, is a, by definition, it's a provincial, if I'm pr pronouncing that right, provincial governor. So you have governors that govern... Big areas, a provincial governor governs a small area, kind of like a, like a mayor, right? Well, why don't they just say that? So Daniel distinguished himself, right? Even, right here it says in verse 3, above the governors and the satraps. And, and these were, you know, people, uh, how would you say? Uh, these were natives to this area. He was a foreigner. But he distinguished himself even above the natives. Amen? See, that's called favor of God. Amen? That's favor. And think about it. What did it really mean to distinguish himself? Because that's what, what Daniel did, is that he distinguished himself. Right? And, and the thing is this, what you need to understand, that let me give you a definition for distinguish. It means successful. Right? Or commanding great respect. Why is it that Daniel distinguished himself? Well, look at what the rest of verse number 3 says. Right? It says that Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit was in him. That comes from spending time daily with God the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? This is what Daniel did. He spent time daily with the Lord. You've seen, I've shown you in verse 10, he prayed three times a day for a very long period of time. That was his custom, what he did. And because he did that, now he has definitely benefited from spending daily time with the Lord. He had an excellent spirit within him. Amen? So what I want you to see is, is that when you spend time daily with the Lord, you will experience the same type of success. You will experience the same type of favor. Amen? Amen. You will also command great respect from spending time daily with the Lord. Now this is just one person that we're looking at, but there are many who spent time daily with the Lord and it benefited them. But I wanted to show you Daniel. Because see, Daniel had faced some opposition. There was people out to get him. Right? So things weren't perfect for him. But see, he trusted in his God. Amen? He trusted in his God. And his God seen him through. And that's what I want you to see. Is that if this is an area that you need to to work on, you're going to start to see the benefits of spending time daily with the Lord. You're going to see the benefits, just like Daniel did. Let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 68. Psalms. And we're going to chapter 68. Psalms chapter 68. We're going to verse number 19. See, I want you to understand that spending time with the Lord is going to benefit you in so many ways. So many ways. See, so many people, they have this misunderstanding of our God. They think that God, all He wants to do is control you. He wants to uh, tell you what to do and what not to do. That's what a lot of people uh, who are unchurched and don't know God. When they don't know God, they don't know His Word, they think that God wants to control you, He wants to tell you what to do, and He, he wants to tell you what not to do. But I want to tell you this morning, you know that is not true. Amen? Amen. 
That is not true. Look at what the Word of God shows us in Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation. Pastor, there's, there's benefits to serving God. There's benefits, yes. And not, and not just uh, 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 the first of the month, not just uh, you know, once a year, but daily. Do you see that? Daily. See, our God is a good God, amen? He's a faithful God. See, and the Lord wants you to know that as you, you know, as you're more diligent in your walk with Him, as you're more diligent and as you press in with Him more regularly, then you're going to start seeing the benefits, amen? Don't get me wrong. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to read your Bible. You don't have to pray, and God can still bless you. But I want you to know that God also wants to spend time with you and wants to show you so much more than you've been experiencing. But see, if you don't spend the time with Him, how are you going to get to know Him? See, when you refer to him as the big guy in the sky, what does that say? That says, that tells me, is there really a personal relationship there? Because, you know, you're talking like he's just some person that's so distant from us. He's our father, amen? And, and the thing is this, is that as you spend time with him, you get to know how good he actually is. And he can show you things. See, and that's just it. As you, as you spend time with him on a, on a more frequent basis, he will give you the answers to the problems. He's going to give you the solutions. He's going to give you those money-making ideas. Amen? As you spend time with him. There are benefits to spending time with the Lord. Let me take you here to the book of Acts chapter 2. We're talking about doing it daily. Amen? Here in Acts chapter 2, I want to show you something. We were in uh, Acts 20 earlier, how the disciples started to meet the first day of the week, remember? And that's how we went from basically worshiping God from on Saturday to Sunday, right? They, they started that, that practice, right? But here in the book of Acts chapter 2, we see something also in uh, verse number 46 of Acts chapter 2. Look at what else they did. In Acts, my Bible is going all over the place here. Give me a second. Okay, Acts cha chapter 2 verse 46. So continuing daily, there's that word again, continuing daily with what? One accord in where? The temple and what? Breaking bread from house to house. See, so they didn't just get together at the church regularly. They got together in each other's homes regularly. See, that's some awesome fellowship right there. They went from continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. But see, I want you to see what happened with this first century church, with the first century Christians. These were the, the first set of Christians after Jesus, right, went to the cross. Look at what happened as they continued the work of Jesus in verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. I don't know about you, but I want to reach more people for the Lord. Amen? Amen? There are people out there that are so far from God. Right? They're so far from God that if God, if, if the Lord were to come back today as we were seeing in Hebrews 10.25, as we see the day approaching, the Lord returning, right? Guess what? They, they would not be going with us. Right? 
And, and I don't want to have an attitude of saying, well, oh well, you know, I'm, I, got my, I got my ticket on the bus. That's on them. No, we got to have a compassion for those who don't know the Lord. Amen? Well, see, we got to get to a place where it becomes a burden with inside of us each and every one of us, that we want to reach those who don't know the Lord. Amen? See, the Bible teaches us that it is our duty. If you consider yourself a Christian, a follower of Christ, it is your duty to tell others about the Lord Jesus. Right? Pastor, I, I don't know what to tell them. Well, then you bring them to church so that, so that we can tell them. Amen? But the bottom line is you got to do something. Amen? you got to do something. You can't just sit on the sidelines forever. Sure, you can sit on the sidelines, but see, the bottom line is this, is that, you know, you're the one that's losing out. The Bible says that there are going to be, there's going to be an award ceremony in heaven when we go before Jesus. There's going to be an award ceremony. How many of you have ever been in school and, and gone to an award ceremony and your name was never called? Didn't feel too good, did it? Everyone's name's being called, and they're going up to the front of the stage there, and, you know, all, everyone's taking pictures, and you're just sitting there because you didn't get no award, because you didn't uh, apply yourself above and beyond. Perfect attendance, I don't know. Straight A's, I don't know, whatever it was. But there's going to be an award assembly. But see, at this award assembly, everyone is going to be present. And it's all going to be, it's all going to happen. And the Lord's going to give out awards. And I'm sorry to tell you that uh, you're not going to get a trophy just because you were on the team. Amen? Right? That's a whole other message right there. That's a whole other message, uh, what we've done to our kids by giving everyone a trophy for participation. But anyways, I'm not going to go there. There's going to be an award ceremony. And the Lord's going to hand out awards. There's going to be five of them called the five crowns. But one specific crown that's going to be given. What's a crown? Where does it go? It goes on your head, right? There's going to be a crown. And that's the soul winner's crown. See, that's for reaching others. For the Lord Jesus Christ. Reaching others for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just want to remind everybody that as you start pressing in daily with the Lord, there's going to be a hunger and desire that's going to be inside of you that you're going to not be able to contain yourself and that you're going to actually have to start wanting to share with other people because why? Because when you're spending time daily with the Lord, you can't just keep all that inside of you. You have to, you know, you, you want to share with other people. And when that happens, when we get the church in a place where each of us is spending time daily with the Lord, what's going to happen, as you, I showed you in Acts 2, 46 and 7, right? We're going to be breaking bread more often, we're going to be go, uh, you know, going from house to house more often. And what's going to happen? People are going to be added to the church daily. People are going to be getting saved daily. Amen? And see, that is the goal. Is reaching as many people as we can for the Lord before He comes back. That's what it's about. I, I didn't write the, the book. I'm just the messenger. Amen? But see, you need to understand is that you will benefit from spending time with the Lord daily. Now, don't be afraid thinking, well, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Don't, don't be worried about all those things. Just focus on trying to get to a place where you're spending time daily with the Lord. Amen? Daily. Because, see, God wants to do something. Amen? He wants to, you know, show you more than you've been experiencing. But see, God can only, you know, uh, you know, do that when you give him those opportunities, when you give him the chance. you got to, you know, initiate. What does the Word of God say? It says, as we 
draw near to him, he draws near to us. See, God has given each and every one of us free will, free choice, right? And, and the thing is this, is he honors and respects that. And so that's why, you know, he doesn't control us. But what I want you to, to understand this morning is that there are benefits to spending time daily with him. Don't underestimate the benefits of spending time daily with the Lord. That's what I want you to take with you this morning. Because I showed you, just like Daniel. Daniel, Daniel was distinguished. He spent time daily with the Lord. And then they tried to, they tried to hate on him, and they, tried to, they passed the law, actually. They said, you can't pray to God no more. And he says, that don't matter to me. Because I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm going to pray to my God, and I'm going to not only pray to him, I'm going to give him thanks as I do every day. Nothing's going to stop me from praying and thanking my God on a daily basis. And see, and, and, and Daniel said, you know what? Doing it once a day just is not enough. He did it three times a day. And as he did it three times a day, we've seen the benefits for him. They threw him in a, in a den full of lions, and what happened? They opened the doors, and there he was sleeping with the lions. I don't know how many people can go in with some hungry lions and come out in the condition that Daniel did, right? Now, many, I know some of you are thinking, no, didn't you see that, that video on Facebook, Pastor, with the, with the lions and, and, the, and the guy, and he was hugging it? Yeah, but he raised that lion from when he was like a little cub. Right? That's a whole different situation. We're talking about hungry lions that don't know you. They don't know your scent. Right? Wild lions. Amen. But see, Daniel had trust in his God. He wasn't going to let nothing stop him. And we see Daniel benefiting from his daily time with the Lord. See, everything that, that they try to come at Daniel with, Daniel always was on the you know, how would you say? He, he, was, he was always, you know, uh, uh, looking good after everything that happened. Because he spent time with his God. Amen? And I just want you to see that this morning. I hope I, I, I nailed that or, or, or drilled that <laughs> enough. I hope I beat that horse dead this morning. Daily. I got to spend time with God daily. But see, as I spend time with God daily, I'm going to benefit from it. Amen? Ooh, God is good, amen? Oh, and I showed you in the book of Psalms that God has benefits for you daily. Daily. Ooh, we serve a good God. See, all God wants to do is show you more. That's all He wants to do. He wants to reveal Himself to you in, a, in such a bigger way. See, don't you want to experience more than you've experienced? Don't you want to... Start to experience the supernatural, the miraculous, right? See, well, we got to learn to press in. We got to learn to be like Daniel and not let nothing stop us from spending time with God. Amen? Amen. Oh, God is good. If I can have everyone just stand as we get ready to close this morning. See,